Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working our way through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Andrew George, a 99th percentile MCAT tutor, and I'll be walking you through today's problem as if you were one of my private tutoring students. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. All right, so what are we trying to accomplish in this question? It's asking us to calculate the isoelectronic point for a specific amino acid, glutamic acid. And it gives us the pKa values for this amino acid. Before we can really do anything with these pKa values, first, we need to understand what an isoelectronic point even is. Basically, the isoelectronic point is the pH at which the amino acid is going to be neutral it's not going to have a charge. And we can figure out if our amino acid is going to be neutral or not at a certain pH based on the protonation of the various functional groups on that amino acid. And that's why in this problem they've given us the various pKa values for each functional group. So what is a pKa value? Basically, it's the pH at which a functional group is going to be half protonated and half deprotonated. When the pH is below the pKa value, we're in an acidic environment, which means there's going to be a lot of protons available. And that means our functional group is more likely to be protonated. When we're above the pKa with the pH, that means our functional group is more likely to be deprotonated because there's less protons available to bind with our functional group. The next thing we need to consider is what the amino acid is going to look like between each of the pKa values that were given to us in the question stem. If you do a quick search on Google, you can pull up a chart that looks like this for any amino acid. And basically what it's showing you is how the structure of the amino acid is changing as we increase the pH. And as you notice, a specific change is happening at each pKa value. So, for instance, they told us in the practice question stem that the pKa value of the carboxyl group, seen right there, is 2.19. And as you can tell, below the pKa value of 2.19, the carboxyl group is protonated, just as we discussed earlier. But as you increase the pH above 2.19, that carboxyl group is more likely to be deprotonated. And then, if we look at the R group, which, you know, we're dealing with glutamate, so it's this R group right here. It's a CH2 methyl group bound to a carboxyl group. And as you notice, below 4.25, it's protonated. No matter where we're looking at it, if we're below 4.25, it's going to be protonated. But as soon as we increase it above 4.25, the majority of the amino acids in the solution are going to be deprotonated as you can see here. The same thing is observed with the amino group. Below its pKa value of 9.67, it's going to be protonated. Above it, it's going to be deprotonated. And this is a really important pattern to know. Uh, you're going to want to memorize every single pKa value for all the amino acids. And that's something that I teach in my amino acids mastery course. Now that we understand the structure of this amino acid at various pHs, we can quickly determine the isoelectronic point. Take a quick look at these different species of the amino acid. Which one is neutral? Exactly. It's this one right here. Notice it has a positive charge on the amino group, and a negative charge on the carboxyl group, and a neutral charge on the R group. The plus charge and the minus charge will cancel out, leaving us with a neutral charge overall. Therefore, our isoelectronic point is going to be somewhere in there. And we determine it by taking the average of the two surrounding pKa values. And that's going to give me a value that is close to 3. Obviously, on the MCAT, you don't need to calculate exact numbers. You just need to calculate approximations. And, but if we were to calculate this exactly, the exact answer would be 3.22. And in my high-speed math mastery course is when I teach how to you know, do these kind of calculations really quickly in your head. And if we go back to the question at hand, we notice that the correct answer is B, 3.22.
which is the closest answer to three. Like I said earlier, knowing the amino acids in and out is especially crucial for the MCAT, which is why I created my amino acids mastery course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. My amino acids mastery course, it'll walk you through everything you need to know about amino acids for the MCAT, teaching you how to quickly memorize the one letter, three letter abbreviations, structures, and key properties of amino acids that you just really have to know for the MCAT. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. And if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, feel free to visit my tutoring profile page and request a free 10-minute phone consultation. I'd love to chat with you and get to know you and your situation a little better to help you know how you can maximize your MCAT score. I look forward to hearing from you soon. See you next time.